So today on Hope for Your Garden, I'm here with Charles Jaros from the American Begonia Society. He's a past president and he's a senior judge. And we're here early while they're setting up all the begonias. And so Charles, tell us a little bit about how this all works. Well, this is, a, this is our annual show and a convention. And uh, people come from all over the United States. I'm from the Orlando, Florida area. Um, one of the gentlemen came entering, exhibiting from Santa Barbara. There'll be people exhibiting from all over. We have speakers from Taiwan. Incredible. And uh, it's, a, it's an international organization, and it, we hold this every year, and this year it's in the San Francisco area. Oh, really nice. And, and, and as, you, as you can see in the background, uh, some of the beautiful plants that are going to be on display for the public. It's going to be open to the public. The show will be open to the public on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, incredible. And you also have a room that will have begonias for sale? Yes, and I'll, I'll take you in there, Annette, and okay. you can get an idea of what uh, is going to be available and for sale. All different types of plants. Oh, beautiful. And how many different varieties of begonias are there? There are th um, thousands of species, which are species that mean they're native to a particular country, and there's even you know many more thousands of hybrids that have been created by you know growers and hybridizers oh, you know, throughout the United States and throughout the world, actually. It's a, it's, it's a very uh, varied plant group. Okay. And it's there's really something for everybody as far as you know likes and dislikes and what you know uh, what you would like to grow in that. And do you have a favorite variety? Do I have species? a favorite variety? Yes, I guess I do. I do. I like the uh, canes. Okay. They were what was used to be called an angel wing begonia. Oh, incredible! Yeah, so nice. I think we probably have an example. We have a couple examples of, of what a you know a cane would be or an, an angel wing begonia here, and we should okay. have examples of all the different groups. Oh, very nice. Shall we go, um, well, we can look at these, and we can also sure. go next door. Maybe while Paul's setting up, we could go yes, next door, definitely. and you could show us a few varieties. Be glad to. Okay. And back over here, we have the cane begonias, and they were what was called angel wing begonias. And uh, they're kind of like a heritage begonia. As many people's grandmothers or great-grandmothers, aunts, uh, had them on their front porch or in their sunrooms or grow them in the house, depending on where Part, what part of the United States and a lot of the public will say well my grandmother had an angel wing begonia do you have an angel wing you know type of angel wing begonias and that's that's uh, these types and uh, and they have very beautiful flowers that are hanging in clusters and in a pendulous type fashion and different colors they're quite nice incredible on the tuberous begonias mm -hmm. um, like you are a senior judge, so there's obviously different things that they look for in judging. That's correct. And on the tuberous begonias, what they really primarily judge for is the flower. It's the shape of the flower, the structure of the flower, the formation of the flower, and you know, are, are the petals correctly uh, layered. layered, you know, on on the flower itself. It's you know, the the foliage is important, yes, but most of your points are on the flowers and that okay and and it, it's very important but they're they're really quite spectacular in this area uh, you know they they grow yeah. they grow wonderfully in that and so there's different varieties of tuberous begonias you have like your rose and your peony form. right you have your uh, camellia type uh, picotty form uh, crested form cristata it's, it's called uh, camellia form and that's the different types of flowers. Okay. And that's how they're in the show, and that's how they'll be displayed in the show also. Okay. And they're judged accordingly as well. And so each category then has certain things right. that you correct. look for. Right, correct, correct. And, uh, you know, these are, are spectacular. Yeah. Uh, this, this has got to be hard to judge. <laughs> they're and all I don't so know incredible. if you want to see uh, Mr. Carlo oh. over, the, yes. over there. He's, uh, he's, and how he ships them and, uh, and, and, and unwraps them. And he ships them that way to protect the flowers so that they don't uh, yeah. rub against each other and bruise in, in shipment. And these came all the way from Los Osos and have made it safely to San Francisco. Yes, they did. 
and you can see so why he does that is so that they're not touching and so that the, the petals aren't you know bruised in any way during uh, sure. bringing them to the, uh, the show and it's uh, quite a u unique way of doing it a very very time consuming to get them ready right to bring up here as well and I think that but I think well worth oh, yeah. it well worth it <laughs> people will be we in like awe I, I love how they emit beauty they yes, emit this they energy are. Just there are incredible. no blue begonias, no purple okay. begonias. Interesting. So mostly, mostly in the orange, oranges, reds, pinks, yellows. reds, yellows, uh, whites. And whites, whites. That's correct. Uh, and of course, all the all the colors in between and, and the shades in between. And even in the tuberous varieties, there's quite uh, uh, unique ones. I see right behind Paul. He has the daffodil, the narcissus form. It's called uh -huh. a narcissus form, and you can see from the side, it looks like a, a, the shape a, of a daffodil flower. Right. Isn't that just incredible? And I love how there's even miniatures over there. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you have and here's that we have like a single a single variety here that's called a cristata, and that's called a Piketty edge when you have the uh, the, the color on the edge of okay. the of the uh, bloom itself. Okay. So the one that's behind the it Piketty. then and is this, also and this Piketty. is a Piketty also correct. And is that and like a double, double ruffle? That would be a double. Mm -hmm. That okay. would be a ruffle. Yes, correct. And spectacular. And of course, these are grown from a bulb, right? You know, much like a, a caladium bulb, or you know, oh. it's, it's a bulb plant type plant. Okay. And originally, the uh, original species, um, the tuberous, came from South America, and come, came from the Andes. And, and through hybridization with other begonias and everything is how they developed all these beautiful tuberous uh, varieties. Oh, But incredible. the original plants came from uh, South America. Incredible. And was the original plant a single, or was it a The original double? plant was a, was a single. Very, very similar, maybe a flower to like this. Very, very okay, similar smaller. to the smaller one over there. They weren't this large at all. But, you know, through hybridizing throughout generations and throughout the years, throughout the 1800s, they started this in the late 18, you know, in the mid to late 1800s with hybridizing to create these beautiful uh, tuberous. And, of course, it's they also phenomenal. come in hanging baskets as well. That's called a pendulous type. Where, where they hang down. Okay, and so where would people go if they wanted to buy like tuberous begonia bulbs? Where's, uh, would you say online, would you say nurseries or does it just oh, depend yeah. on your area? I think it really depends on your area. Where I'm from in, in Florida, we can't grow these. Unfortunately, oh, yes, I can grow all the other types that we looked at over uh, oh, okay. at the other tables, the but because of where they came from, they like it cooler and they like it uh, moist, moist, which is why this uh, Northern California, you know, Central California, Northern California is the perfect, is the ideal oh, area for growing them in that. Okay. They grow in, and they can grow in other parts of the United States, the Northern States, but uh, once you get into the Southern States, it gets too, uh, we have hot. the humidity, but we have the, no, the temperatures are too high. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so then it just depends on their online and what they're That's looking correct, for. That's correct, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Because I know that they are hard to find in nurseries. Right. We have a nursery and we even have a hard time getting there's them a, in. There's a, ni there's a good nursery down in Montecito okay. that has a lot of nice uh, tuberous begonias in oh, that. Oh, nice. And that, that, that they specialize in begonias. Oh, sweet. I can't wait to go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's, there's something. That, and what's nice about begonias, there really is something for everybody. Like I said, I can't grow the tuberous, but I can enjoy the other ones in that. And, oh. And be just as happy. Yeah. Well, the other room I know is spectacular. Yes. And there so are maybe some we should very, go in there. Yeah, yes. Maybe we should go in there really next. Fun. Okay. Where, what, where the room that we're in now is our plant sale area, and this is what's going to be available for the the public to buy in that uh, on the two days of the show, this coming Saturday and Sunday. And the, the uh, like I said, there's really again a wide range of plants that are going to be available. It's whatever whatever you like. I mean, there's going to be something here. You know, something for a beginner as well as someone, something for an advanced grower and everything in between. Incredible. And will they also have tuberous in here? They will probably have, have some tuberous as well, yes. Incredible. Definitely. You know, we're Incredible. just setting up in that. Right. Um, these are called rhizominous begonias that we're in okay. front of right now. And they come from uh, areas of Africa, uh, tropical areas of uh, Africa, Asia, and, and the Americas, Central and South America. And it's probably the largest group of begonias are your rhizominous. And probably for a beginner, some of one of the easier types to grow. Nice. You know, if you're just starting out in begonias, you would probably want to try a, a, a different nice. rhizominous. And these like bright light 
But they not like direct a, they, sun. So, correct. They like a bright location, a filtered location where it gets nice filtered light. A lot of people grow them under trees because it gets the dappled light that comes through the trees and that. Okay. Uh, eastern exposures where it gets morning sun. Okay. And uh, you really kind of want to keep them away from the very heat of the day, you know, the afternoon sun, midday sun. Right. And they can take... Um, like outdoor cooler temperatures. Yes, they, they can. And they can also be house plants yes, if they it can, stays yes, cool enough. Right. Depending mm -hmm. on the location of where you live in the United States, uh, northern growers, of course, have to grow them inside during the wintertime. Okay. And right. they, they do exceptionally well as a light garden plant. If you grow in fluorescent lights, very much like an African violet, okay. uh, they grow very, very well that way. Window cells, there are some that are very, very tiny, which only leaves that are three inches or less, which would be perfect for a window cell environment. Incredible. Again, if you have limited space, there's a, there's a begonia for every Everybody. space. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, incredible. So some of the different varieties of, um, of begonias with the, like this one, for instance, mm -hmm. um, you have variegation, you have the hairy. That's correct. And even that one. And, you know, there are different leaf shock types. This is what would be called a spiral leaf. It has the corkscrew effect uh, okay. in the leaf. And that's a, a type of uh, begonia. And that this this leaf will get will get to be probably six to twelve inches when it gets larger, oh, and it'll wow. keep that spiral look and that color. Incredible. And they're they're really really fun. Uh, like I said, it's a wide range of plants. If you look over here on this table right behind you, uh, it's uh, those are called rexes, and and uh, okay. and a lot of people are familiar with rex begonias. Re right. And they're a little bit more easier to grow. Uh, it can that came from a single species called Begonia rex, which was discovered in uh, Assam, India back in the 1850s. And oh, again, nice. through hybridization, uh, we were able to develop you know, the beautiful color and sheens of the different type of rexes. Incredible. There's, um, and then there's a couple of the smaller flowering varieties. They all flower. They all some... flower, but so they're seasonal flowers. Okay. Um, this variety here, the rhizomatous that we were talking about, they're winter bloomers, so they bloom between midwinter and late spring. Okay. So if you're in, in an area where you're going to get snow and that, you're going to have some beautiful flowers during the winter to enjoy before your springtime comes out. Incredible. Some of them are ever blooming and they bloom, you know, continuously throughout the year. Incredible. And then these are? These are the angel the, wings that we talked about okay, earlier. the cane. Uh, mm -hmm. And which, you know, a lot of people say their grandmother had the canes and everything. And you can see the, 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 the clusters that they get. They're, uh. they're quite, quite lovely. And look at that silver spot. Right. It looks like somebody so even see. even when the plant isn't in bloom, you can you know it's still it's still a beautiful uh, plant to look at with the spotting and and the, the shape of the leaf and that. So begonias can be enjoy, enjoyed even when they're not in flower, which is which makes it nice as well. And do all varieties go dormant? No, 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 no. no. The tuberous so varieties are the only ones that go dormant. Okay. These so really these are really are yeah year round. correct. That just makes them more addictive. Yes, it does. <laughs> De definitely, definitely. Uh, so. Once you start with one begonia. It'll definitely want to have yeah. more than one. Oh, there's some incredible, and these like miniature leaf right. ones. Now these are, they call the, commonly they call these a maple leaf begonia. This is called a semi-tuberous begonia, and they, they're native to South Africa, only to South okay. Africa. And they have a caudex, as they get older, it forms like a bulb. You can see the caudex right oh, there. Oh, interesting. And they don't go, they don't go semi, uh, completely dormant like the regular large tuberous that we oh, saw okay. earlier do. So this would be a good variety for bonsai yes. later oh, on. Yes, oh yes, yeah, Incredible. They, they use these a lot in a bonsai type setting. Fabulous. Oh, this is that little dragi? Right, correct, dragi. yes, uh-huh. Incredible. But that's a and species, this is a native uh, from South Africa. Absolutely phenomenal. And, and of course the, the reason for the codex, is uh, its reason is to store water. Oh, so it's a little during more dry, dry tolerant. During, yes, during a dry season, that's the... the the primary reason for the codex. And do all begonias like food? Like, are they all like the tuberous begonias are regular feeders? Yes, they do. So, and these yes. would like like usually a, uh, a good well good well balanced fertilizer. Okay. And I always tell when I give a lecture, I always tell my people, you know, garden club or whoever I'm giving a lecture to, I said begonias are like people. You know, we don't like the same diet all the time. We don't want to eat chicken 365 days out of the year. Well, your, your plants don't like that either. So I tell people to alternate their fertilizers. Nice. Use this variety one time, the right. next time use a different one, because they all, all the fertilizers all have different you know, right. micronutrients in them. Right. And so by changing your fertilizer, 
with each fertilizing schedule, you're giving them a really a well-balanced uh, diet. formula and well-balanced diet. Nice. And I know they like fish. That's always been, I think, the yeah, fish emulsion, fish emulsion is, is great. Excellent. excellent. But excellent. then switching that up with some mm -hmm. other liquid fertilizers. And, you know, a lot of the time-release time fertilizers are good, too. Okay. And uh, there's one called... Um, Dynamite, I think right. it's called, and I love that. That's what I use. I love oh, Dynamite. Oh, nice. But what's nice about Dynamite that I can still supplement, supplement it with other fertilizers. Right. It doesn't burn because it's an organic base. Correct. Yes. Incredible. Yeah, that is an excellent one. We're, but and there's a, there's that. a lot of great fertilizers out there. But I, I really it. think you know I, I tell people to try and you know to right, use and different fertilizers. Right. And see which ones your plant responds yeah. to. And, and like I said, use different ones. Like I said, we yes. like a varied diet. So do your plants. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about these crinkle leaf? Uh, this is a uh, this is a species. This is called Gertie. It's a wonderful, wonderful plant. It's quite. Uh, it, it'll it gets the leaves will get to be quite large, about 12 inches, when you know at maturity. The flowers uh, will have hairs on them. Oh, and incredible! Quite unique. It's really a, a cool plant. It's spectacular. It's and just and a lot of people are familiar with. Them. They call them um, wax begonias. Uh, botanically, it's called a semperflorin, and this is a double form, uh, which, you don't, which you don't see yeah. too often either. And a lot of a lot of people like to use these as bedding plants. I was going to say this is a great right. shade plant yeah. when you can find it. Yes, and the, the, the doubles are a little bit more hard to find. Right. You know, the, the single varieties are a lot more easier, but it's fun to find the doubles. And mm. the, the same uh, cultural uh, requirements as the the regular singles. Now, is this a like some of the wax begonias are annuals? Is this an annual variety? It's an annual, but you could you know you keep can it going with keep cuttings? it going right. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. And so cuttings are pretty. A good way to start begonias. Yes, yes. Excellent way. And okay. depending on the variety, you can start them just from a single leaf, very much oh, like an African violet. Oh, very nice. This is even gorgeous. This is. I said that's that's. Yeah, there, now, this you is just quite, see This them. is a species from <gasps> South. Uh, oh my goodness. South America, and it, it, this is what's called an adventitious leaflet that it gets. And so those are little starts. Those little are, babies. Those are just little, you know. Or leaflets. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, leaflets Incredible. that are that grow on, and this is typical of that of this particular species. <sighs> And this is... It's called mm. Hispeta variety cuculifera. Wow. <laughs> that's wow. That's a mouthful. And the, oh my goodness. I didn't see these earlier and now it's like, oh, there's oh, yes. some more. Yeah, it's gonna, we're going to have a really, really Woo. nice selection of plants. Yeah, incredible. And, 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 and it's an education for the, pub, for the public oh. as well. You know, showing them the different... That's one of the reasons why we have the shows and that. Right. Is to show people that it, it isn't always the wax begonias or it isn't always the rex begonias that, you know, people are more familiar with. There's right. a whole wide range for people to be excited about. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And I know there's, a, like, a few over here that I might have you... Sure. ...tell us a little bit about. Um, I think there's some on this first table that were very unique and this obvious. Is too. Yeah, that this little guy. I right, that's a, that's that's from Brazil, and it's called Begonia soli mutata, and it's uh, it's a rhizomatous. The leaves will get a little larger than this, but it's quite quite striking with the colored foliage. Yeah, the colored foliage and then the texture. Mm -hmm. which I don't know if she can get, but maybe in a close up, the texture is just so cute. It is. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing, and even the color. Right. Differences like and this for is, new and this growth. Is a, this is a cute name. This is Marmaduke, Begonia Marmaduke. <laughs> oh, cute. Now, how do the names get get put on? Is uh, it? The hybridizer. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, this is a hybrid, and as I said, this is a species. Okay. And uh, this is a hybrid, so the hybridizers can can, can can choose the name that they want in that. That is. Sweet. Sometimes they'll choose the name by looking at the plant, deciding what. Uh, you know the texture of the leaf, or how it looks when it's you know growing right. in that, and it'll just come to them that oh boy, that it would be cute to name it that particular name in that. And they used to do begonias by numbers. Uh, we do have some numbers, and those are things that have been just recently discovered, oh, okay. and that were the American Begonia Society. We're still doing research on those plants to see if it's a newly brand new species that's never been you know in the cultivation again, okay. or something that's been uh, reacquired again, and that, that's called a you call it an unidentified number, a U number. Okay. Now, if it has a name and a number. Like and there's a page 13. Well, I think? Uh, well, this one, for instance, used to be called U003. Oh, okay, and uh, then it gets. And then, and then through research, we were able to. It was a brand new species, and 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 it, it got the name the uh, the botanist that described it, who named it Begonia solimutata. It originally had a number. 
Oh, interesting. And the silver. That's like the Rexes I was talking about okay. earlier, right? They all have the same ancestor, the one plant. It's called Begonia Rex. Okay. And when you see other spotted leaves, are they Rex or are there canes with silver too? It depends. Uh, not always. It depends. It depends on the background. Okay. It really depends on the background of the plant. Incredible. It's amazing what Mother Nature and, mm -hmm. and with the help of... And this is a really pretty one over there. It's from China. It's called Masoniana. It has a common name that we call it. This, this one? one right there. It's called Iron Cross. Oh, this is... And a lot of people are familiar with that mm -hmm. name. And it's really... But it is a species from China. A native, a native from China. And you yeah. can see by the different textures, they're really, really exciting plants. Uh, some are beautiful reddish tones, like this one here is called Red Fred. I mean, just, just gorgeous. And was this hybridized by the gentleman in Montecito? Yes, uh -huh. okay. it, was developed, it was developed by him from Montecito, that's Mike? correct. Yeah, Mike Flaherty, that's okay. correct. Incredible. And he has a wide selection of begonias. <laughs> that is... So if anyone's ever visiting that area... In, trip. in Montecito, yes, it's definitely, definitely worth the trip. Absolutely amazing. But coming to yeah, a convention and sale like this is probably one of the best ways to get different types of begonias. Okay, and people can join the American Begonia Society. Yes, by they can do. They can join it through. It's the website is www.begonias.org, and information about joining you can join directly, you know, through the website. And then you would get information. You, we, on we have we have a publication that comes out uh, six times a year, on and in, in, within that publication it has you know cultural, you know, Information growing, on, growing and things and that, and also places on where you can purchase them, you know, uh, oh, nice. mail order and okay. that as well. Color pictures within the, you know, in the magazine for identification purposes, a great magazine. Yeah, definitely. I actually have... And I've a... been a member since 1972. Oh, very nice. So I've been nice. a member a long time. <laughs> very nice. I just started last year, so I'm new to, to joining. I've known about the begonias, and mm -hmm. I remember as a little kid going to Antonelli's right, farm, correct, and yes. you would look up and it would yes. just be a sea of begonia colors but you can't find them like that anymore i mean there's not it didn't seem local places that you could go no, to yeah so now it's the conventions where the we're convention see yes is, is incredible and, and of course joining local branches like if there's a local branch in san, in san francisco they're the host branch that is putting this convention on okay. and then there's branches throughout the united states as right. well i think we do have a local branch and uh, so there is one in santa barbara yeah there's one yes okay. There is one in Santa Barbara. They're throughout the United States, and it's and also within that list, uh, the American Begonia Society website, it does list where the, these branches are in, in that, okay. and that, and, con and, where and contacts. Nice. Because a lot of the local branches also have their own shows, oh, which is a, which is also a good way to you know acquire see. different plants and to, and to see different types of plants and that as well, right. different begonias. Uh, it's fun. Absolutely <laughs> amazing, and um, I love how the the some of the colors, the silver and the red on the Rex begonias, mm -hmm. and um, I have one at the nursery that is just fire red with right. silver, yes. and it's just, yes. just incredible. Like I said there really, there really is uh, something for everybody and, and something to, to, you know, to enjoy. Uh, absolutely amazing. Well, thank and then, you. And yeah. like I said, they're not hard to grow. No. And yeah, a little, <laughs> little, little checking. Thank you so thank much, you much for I taking enjoyed. us through. And, and I hope uh, people will come and enjoy the show. Yeah. And we'll be here to answer questions, you know, during the show and everything. And it runs every year. So it if they did year. miss it this year, it they can see it next year. That's correct. Oh, well, so very thank good. you. And thank you again. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Very good. I'm with Mike Flaherty, and he has gazebo plants in, yes, in Montecito. Montecito. And, um, 38 years Oh, in my business. goodness. And you're a begonia specialist? I'm a begonia loon. <laughs> I've been it. collecting begonia since 1961, when I bought my first one in high school. And I've been entering shows for the last 12 years. Oh, my um, goodness. And I go all different types of begonias, Okay. as you can see. And so these, this is your little collection. Little? This is <laughs> a lot for a, for a begonia show. This is a lot. A lot. They I go love over it. here where we have little standard trees, kind of uniquely grown plants, terrariums, canes, shrubs, species, all kinds of different begonias. And so the little speckled Oh, that's spotted. a cutie, isn't it? Uh, that is a speckled cane. It's called Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle. And I, Doodle. there's only about three of those in the United States. Absolutely amazing. And that's a hybrid 
That's, yes, that's a hybrid then, by uh, Charles Magoo of Texas. And this is a species there. And this is one I got in Australia. Uh, this one's called oh. Cracker Jacks. This is Mr. Hunt, very unusual. That's its B side, not its A side. Oh my goodness. I've done something here with uh, a tuberous begonia. I made it into a tree. I searched on the internet. I can't find anyone that's ever done a tuberous in a tree form. Incredible. And so you've been growing this one. It goes dormant every year. And yes, so that's it, all new it, growth. It will die back. This, this one doesn't die back until about the end of December. Okay. And so then you just pinch and... Then I this. saved the tuber, okay. but the way I grew it is I took all the little growths that come and just left one growth, and then I trained it to grow up like that. Oh, absolutely spectacular. And so at your shop, people could come, and they could hopefully. buy, hopefully, plants, and you carry I am the largest varieties. seller of begonias retail in Central California. Amazing. I know. Oh. I'm amazed, too. I think that could be a whole show where we could come <laughs> down and check out the store. And we usually have a show every year in Montecito. And uh, this year we decided to participate in the San Francisco show, but we do have a, a show every year in Montecito. And what so month well does that run? Always in August. Always in August. When okay. Paul Carlisle's tuberous are all in bloom, that's when we have the show. Oh, yeah. incredible. He's the star of our show. Oh, phenomenal. I have made him so famous. <laughs> I love it. Well, we adore him too. Not unlike myself. With just a little silver streaking. A little silver streaking. That's a lot of silver streaking. It's a beauty. <laughs> Love it. I actually, this plant was uh, hybridized by Brad Thompson. He's a famous hybridizer, and he gave it to me and uh, said he's naming it after me. And I thought, I looked Aww. at it and I thought, well, I like it, but it's going to be hard to grow. Easy peasy. Easy to nice. grow. No problem. Oh. Spectacular. This is a fern leaf begonia here. So I want to say Some thank you. Like oh. <laughs> I want to say thank you. Well, and, thank you, uh, and you better very come, good. come down. Yes. I can even I'm... show you Oprah's place. It's five oh. doors down from my shop. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. Oh. oh, we're on our way. Let's go. Thanks. Yeah. This is my hybrid, Red Fred. It's not so much a hybrid as a sport, but I found it. I kept it. I love it. commercialized it. I developed it. And you spread it. And I, and I did it all. I did it my way. Hold for your garden fruits and veggies a natural treat. Hold for your garden blossoms blooming so you'll sweet. So come on, join us. You will enjoy it. You'll stay informed when you are gardening. Sounds blue and soy.